So I've been covering this whole, you know, you know, debate, the whole, you know, you want to talk about two megachurch pastors going at it between Mark Driscoll and John Lindell that started at the Stronger Men's Conference. And I thought that I was done with it. To be perfectly honest, the two of them had shown signs of reconciliation uh, after Mark Driscoll had, you know, come back on stage and John Lindell and Driscoll were exchanging, you know, pleasantries with one another. You know, it's like they were kissing and making up. Even at one point, John Lindell, and I called this out at the time, had referred to Mark Driscoll as the modern day John the Baptist, which is hysterical to me to refer Mark Driscoll to John the ba- I mean, it's just, it's just, these people are just something else. They're all clowns to me, to be perfectly honest with you. And later on, You know, after the two of them, you know, and and Driscoll had apologized to Lindell by saying, you know, I should have confronted you about the Alex Magala performance, you know, prior to the event starting and and everything like that. And, you know, it was just, it was sickening, actually, to hearing these two go back and forth in just this big love fest. But even later on, Lindell had, you know, tried to manipulate those in attendance by saying that, you know, you can't criticize the man of God, those who are anointed, because then you're going to bring trouble to yourself, which is just something that these pastors always try to do. You know, when they're trying to defend their platforms and their their false teachings and everything else like that. And in all places, they do this at a men's conference because you know, it's not really about what they say. They can control and manipulate these men very easily. They do it every single year. So again, I thought I was done with this, but then all of a sudden now, more trouble. Mark Driscoll apparently trying to oust John Lindell from James River Church. This entire thing was addressed by John Lindell during James River Church's midweek service. It took place on Wednesday, April 17th. This is absolutely crazy. We're going to dive into the details of it here. Welcome, everybody, to Not By Sight News. Yes, blind Christian guy here reporting to you, reminding you, as always, we walk by faith, not by sight. For someone like me, that's kind of my only option. Speaking of that, for those interested, you want to know my story. How did I go blind? How do I operate my entire ministry without being able to see? I made a video that explains it all. You'll find a link to that in the description section of all my videos. Also, if God puts it on your heart to do so, consider making a generous donation to support my ministry. A few different ways you could do that. One, hit the super thanks button on the YT video here to make a contribution that way. Or... Join my Patreon for as little as five bucks a month, patreon.com slash news. link in the description. Joining Patreon, you get all the videos before they hit the main YT platform. Also with that, some exclusive links to these topics that we discuss, some that I have to include on Patreon now. You know, you got to be kind of careful with YT. But while you're there, you can comment censorship-free on all videos, even send me DMs. So check it out. It's patreon.com slash news. Big thank you to everybody already contributing and those thinking of doing so. Thank you as well. Your generosity is greatly appreciated. So apparently, John Lindell, again, this was in a service on Wednesday, April 17th. The conference was the weekend prior. Again, we think everything is all squashed between the two. They're all chummy again, right? I called the Stronger Men's Conference out for the Alex Magala performance on the pole and the whole sword swallowing thing, ripping off the shirt. Remember, Mark Driscoll said that it was a Jezebel spirit that was in there. I didn't disagree with him with what he said. Uh, But again, this is a disqualified pastor. Even a broken clock could be right twice a day. So I guess Driscoll fits that. Now, if you miss any of those videos that I did prior, please go back on the channel and check them out. I don't want to do too much review. I want to get into this new stuff because Lindell addressing that apparently Mark Driscoll had contacted Lindell's son, David. Now, for those that don't know, this was announced back in 2023. John and Debbie Lindell announced that you know, the future plan here is to transition leadership of the church over to their two sons, David and Brandon. Okay. Now there's no exact timetable on that. They didn't put an exact year on it, but that transition is going to be taking place soon. Now, apparently according to Lindell, Driscoll had contacted David Lindell again here, John's son. And this was apparently, you know, through a phone call they had and also text messages that were sent between the two where Mark Driscoll was apparently trying to convince David to get his father, his mother, and even his brother, Brandon, out of the way and immediately take over James River Church. Remember, this comes after these two apparently reconciled. 
But Mark Driscoll had brought up again the Jezebel spirit. He talked about, because Mark Driscoll went on social media, he looked at the social media page of Alex Magala. You know, again, this guy calls himself a Christian. He, he, he bit back at Mark Driscoll too and said, how dare you criticize my performance? I'm a Christian. Okay, whatever. People can say whatever they want. You can call themselves whatever you want. But at the end of the day, the Bible says people will know you by your fruits. There you go. And well, Magala's social media posts can be are filled with photos of him that are shirtless and he's giving the bird the middle finger to the camera. So yeah, this doesn't really seem like somebody who is really walking a true Christian life. So I can agree with Driscoll on that. But all of this was brought to the attention, apparently, of David Lindell. And Mark was telling him that your father is out of line here. He doesn't see what's going on. He continues to defend this Magala guy as somebody who is an actual Christian when he's not. You need to do the right thing. You need to get John and Debbie Lindell and your brother Brandon out of the way. And you need to take over the church. Now, the other thing that Mark said here that was addressed by John Lindell was that apparently he told David that something is wrong with your brother Brandon. I get this bad, you know, feeling about him. The Lord's telling me there's something wrong with him. So you need to get him to the side as well. Get him out of there. You know, Driscoll then went on social media and he started talking more about the Jezebel spirit. He's got a book, by the way, that's coming out about that very topic. So I'm kind of wondering if that has something to do with it too. But Lindell said that he went to Driscoll privately about this. He tried contacting him. He didn't want to take his call. And so he then reached out to Jimmy Evans, marriage author, who was one of the individuals who was responsible and helping to get Driscoll, quote unquote, restored back into ministry to start his church, Trinity Church in Arizona, after the whole Mars Hill debacle took place. And Lindell had even said that, well, because you did, I tried to go to you privately, now it's time for Matthew 18, which Lindell talked all about Matthew 18 at the Stronger Men's Conference. Again, they love using Matthew 18. So... Lindell said, now I'm addressing this publicly for everybody to hear. He said, you wouldn't answer me. I got Evans to try and contact you, tell you to repent. You're refusing to repent. Again, the whole message here theme was, Mark, you need to repent. You had no right to sow, you know, you know, disunity here in my family and trying to get me out of my position here at the church, all of that. But then apparently it went even further than that. This just whole thing, as I continue to, you know, to report on it, it's just so embarrassing for the church. This is the modern day church. Let me tell you something really quick before I get on to the next point here. All these people are bad. John Lindell, Mark Driscoll, Alex Magala, James River Church. They're all bad. Okay. And they're all, now they're all going at each other. Okay. Before they defend each other, then they, you know, stab each other in the back. I mean, it's just, it's a clown show. It is an absolute clown show. So apparently this is again, according to Lindell, the receptionists there at the church apparently and others at James River apparently start getting death threats because of things that Driscoll is saying and him speaking poorly about James River Church. He said it got so bad that they had to, you know, take the calling system at the church and just have it go automatically to voicemail. The receptionist was fearing for her life in this. Liddell saying that he talked to the, you know, that the head of the Assemblies of God to report this to them as well about Driscoll. Just one big giant mess. And I mentioned the text messages. You had Lindell actually show the text messages apparently that were exchanged between Driscoll and his son, David, putting it all out there in the church, just putting all the dirty laundry out there. But according to Lindell, well, Matthew 18, we got to do this. So he said that if Mark Driscoll does not repent, then you should have nothing to do with this man whatsoever. As far as ministry goes. You should have had nothing to do with Mark Driscoll in ministry ever since the Mars Hill situation. But Lindell was one of those that signed off on him. And now you're kind of getting what you, you know, deserve. You know, you put your support behind this man. You propped him up. You called him a modern day John the Baptist at the Stronger Men's Conference. And now this guy is trying to come into your church and break everything apart. I can't feel sorry for John Lindell. I really can't. And again, I don't like Mark Driscoll. But you know what? It's like, you can't control this guy. You propped him up, but now look at him. He's he's running everywhere. He's 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 loose, right? He's unhinged, unhinged. Mark Driscoll. And now John Lindell is is you sow you reap what you sow. I remember just saying the Bible talks about this. You know Lindell defend Magala during the service as well. He's a Christian now. Go check his social media. Tell me if he's a Christian. So this whole thing again, the transition at James River Church. We know the sons are taking over eventually. Driscoll wants it to happen now. 
It's just an embarrassment. Again, they're all bad here. These are all bad apples, okay? The fruit's rotten on, on everybody's part here. By the way, let me mention this because Sean Foyt, those of you who know Sean Foyt, you know, from the Let Us Worship Tours, he went on social media. This was back at the Stronger Men's Conference, and he posted the clip with Lindell and Driscoll, like, you know, in the Love Fest up there on stage, and he was saying, this should be the clip that's going viral. Reconciliation amongst brothers. But no, everybody just wants to be negative all the time and bring up all the bad. Sean Foyt is completely delusional if he thinks that these two men here are actual men of God and not actual clowns. Sad, very sad. But again, I will have the clip from the service in the description here. You can let me know your thoughts on this whole thing as it just continues to play out. Who knows what's next? To be perfectly honest with you what i want to do right now is end this video on hope it's part of my ministry outreach this is an altar call i've been doing this on my videos since 2016. no matter what it is that i'm discussing here in the church exposing the false prophets we always want to give people the opportunity to receive jesus as lord and savior so for anybody watching now if you're somebody that has not yet received jesus as lord and savior and you would like to do so i want to lead you in a prayer to do that right now this is a prayer you could do in your own words, but I will give you the steps you need to bring it before the Lord today. First thing you want to do right off the top, acknowledge you are a sinner. That is something that we all are. The good news is that God gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on that cross for the sins of all the world. As he died and rose again for you and me. He paid the cost. What you have to do is repent of your sin. That means to turn from sin, not just to say you're sorry and jump back to your old ways, but to actually turn from sin, which are those lifestyles, patterns, habits, behaviors, things in your life that go against the word of God. If you humbly go before the Lord, though, and ask him to forgive you, he'll wipe your sin away, and the Bible says he doesn't remember it any longer. And then you invite Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior. When you do that, you become born again, a child of God. You will have eternal life. Trust me when I tell you there is no greater decision that you will ever make than the one you do to give your life to Christ. And I pray you make that decision today. Again, more info down below. Don't forget, the links to donate to the ministry are there as well. Join the Patreon for as little as five bucks a month, patreon.com slash notbysightnews. Or hit the super thanks button on the YT video here to make a contribution that way. It's all a great blessing. Thank you all again so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll be back with more. You guys take care. Please be safe out there. God bless each and every single one of you. And I'll talk with you soon.